Hi and welcome back to my channel. Do I want to start with that? People always say that. Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. Yeah. Hi, thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Rafula Matsela, but you can call me Fifi. And what it do to the 350 gang. I'm so excited. It seems like a small milestone, but it's, it's something worthwhile and meaningful to me. Reaching 350 subscribers, whether you're here for uh, the hair content, whether you are here for the motherhood content, the twin journey, even just to see the twins. Thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, please take the time to do so now by clicking below. Also ensure that you click the notification bell so that you get alerts anytime that I post. I am trying my best to post once or twice in a week. I know, very, very hectic schedule, but I think the more content I share, the more I grow and learn and I'm able to connect with individuals. These platforms are there for exactly that. We're there to learn from each other, connect and do a whole lot more. So let's get into it. I get asked very often, if I sleep with uh, twins, how many hours do I get to sleep? Are the babies sleeping um, throughout the night at all? How many times do I get up? All sorts of questions. And to be quite honest with you, I sleep very, very well. I won't say like a baby because at times sleeping patterns for babies are erratic. The origin of that saying, I don't know where it comes from, but babies generally do not sleep well within the first few weeks of life. So one very important thing to remember with your twins or your newborn baby is that these are fresh humans. They just got to the world, right? The outside world. They've been contained in mommy's womb. It's all warm. It's the perfect temperature. Um, you know, loud sounds and bangs are sort of cushioned by everything that's in mommy's womb. So um, it, it's a wonderful environment to be in. And then one day the uterus just starts contracting and squeezing and forcing this baby out. And they're like, hold on. What is happening around me? It's a very scary thing and having to adjust to this world is intimidating. I, I'd like to think at least for most babies. So this is a brand new human who still has to learn Ideally, I think what a 24 hour cycle is in terms of day and night in the womb. I think there are some studies that um, actually can show that babies are aware of the you know sunrise sunset and so forth but generally being out there in the world and having to learn that people need to sleep people sleep it's a huge huge thing so for all the mommies out there who are currently sleep deprived as we were for about four or five months of our baby's um new lives and parenthood hang on hang on i've got some great tips that will hopefully assist you and you can get back to your normal sleep routine or at least be sleeping longer than two hours at a time so when the babies were born and they came back from the hospital it was a huge adjustment for both daddy and i so we had to realize that okay the babies are on more or less a two hour cycle so wake up change nappies eat uh eat a little bit of awake time and then they would fall back asleep again and we would just do this throughout the night every two hours every two to three hours it becomes very hectic and eventually they get into their own rhythm and pattern and as the weeks go as baby grows from two months to three months to four months to five months you should notice a significant difference in the feeding schedule and their awake time periods i'll attach all of the resources down in the comments below what i was reading uh, for infants for twin moms anyone interested in just expanding their knowledge around this very significant time in a baby's life so there we were early parenthood that was our routine two to three hours two to three hours one of the great things that worked and helped us was sort of swaying and rocking the babies to sleep this is a motion that they are used to from being in mom's belly so mom's walking around mom is standing up sitting down there's a there's a rhythm right that's soothing and calming and will place babies back into their sleep until we got to a point where I think between four and a half months and five months where the time that we were rocking the twins to bed 
would just take longer and longer and longer every evening. The maximum where we hit our maximum was 30 minutes. So we would have the lights off in here, uh, the TV would be around the only thing and we would just pray to God that our neighbors aren't rowdy today, don't make a noise. And each one of us would be holding a baby and just walk around and do the, you know, age old shh, 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 na, 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 na. <laughs> Until there was a day where we just stared at each other from across the room and in both of our eyes and exhaustion, we were like, nah, this is not it. Hi, Sibets. Hi, Sibets. It's not working anymore. The babies are kicking. They're more awake and alert, even in the evenings. And one of the contributing factors to it being difficult for a child to fall asleep is that they're constantly growing and developing, right? Uh, I'm talking hunger aside, uh, illness aside, you know? So they're constantly growing and moving. This was at the time where the babies could now, you know, have better neck control, could slightly lift off the ground using their arms and chest as well. Uh, during tummy time, they could roll from either side to side. Early days within the first, what, two to six weeks you just place the baby there and they sleep still like you know that's about it but now between four and a half months and five months there's a lot going on like oh my body can do this and my body reacts to this they become just so much more self-aware it's a fascinating journey but also very very exhausting at the time i then decided to look into sleep training methods so i spoke to daddy about it and he said sure let's see what 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 is it that we can do to ensure that in the evening the babies sleep for longer they were at a point where I know they weren't waking up because they needed to breastfeed throughout the night. So instead of breastfeeding four to five times in a night, I realized actually we could get away with two times, but now they're just awake and they're startling themselves awake by moving and jerking and doing all sorts of things. So I was like, okay, we need to find a way to zen you out, to calm you down to the point where you won't need me every time so that you can fall asleep we looked into the Ferber method. All right, so the Ferber method, I just wanted to read you a definition of it. The Ferber method or Ferberization is a technique invented by Richard Ferber to solve infant sleep problems. It involves sleep training children to self-soothe by allowing the child to cry for a permitted amount of time at intervals before receiving external comfort. That's one of the best ways to sum it up. It's interval training and showing your child it is okay to fall back asleep by yourself without mommy or daddy coming in to pick you up, soothe you, cuddles, hugs and kisses, and rock you back to sleep. The dangers with rocking a child back to sleep or constantly soothing them, patting them on their backs, is that they will be dependent on that sleep cue from you, mom or dad, <laughs> to, in order to fall back asleep. Very frustrating, given that babies can just, you know, jerk themselves awake and, and all sorts of things. So we tried out the Ferber method. I'll attach the link down below. Comment if you would like more details and more specifications on how it was that we did it. So we started off, I think it was a random Wednesday night and we said, all right, we've read enough about this method. We've seen enough. We've compared it to the others. This, this seems to be the model that will suit us best. And we decided to start. So normal evening routine, um, bottles, snuggles time, and then we switch off the lights and the household quietens down. So less playtime, less funny faces and doing all those cute things. We're getting ready to sleep now. And we did that, we had bottles, took them in our arms for just a little bit, and then it was time to put them in their cots in their rooms. If you're still comfortable, mom, with having baby in your room, that's okay as well. If it works out for you and baby's able to sleep, by all means, but for us, uh, in order just to have some downtime, some privacy, some us time again, it was better to have the babies in their own room. So perfect, cool. Put them down each in their separate cots. By five months, yeah, they were already sleeping in their separate cots. They were getting big, they were moving around and kicking each other awake when they used to share a cot. So we put them down in their separate cots. We put them down for about three minutes and then we, we put them down and then we walked out and then immediately they began crying. So we let them cry it out for five for three minutes. 
and then you go back in and for no more than a minute are you in the room soothing your child so you don't pick them up you gently pat stroke their little legs stroke their um, shoulders on their chest and bellies and you shush 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 and you shush 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 and you rub along my and you, whatever it is right it's sleep time we also use very specific words and you do that for no more than 60 seconds and you walk back out once they start crying again you start the timer from the beginning but now we're going up to five minutes and then you go back in if they're still crying at five minutes and you shush 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 and you soothe and you soothe and then you walk back out then you up the intervals then it goes to seven minutes then it goes to 12 minutes then it goes to 15 minutes i think up to 18 minutes you can go and once you've hit the maximum of 18 you times 18 again so you would start at 18 immediately so you wouldn't go back to the three minutes you just keep it at 18. and i kid you not we had the baby sleep trained in three days it was the wednesday thursday come friday it was much much better the longest time that the babies cried for was about 15 minutes i think dad 15 minutes and it was difficult it was difficult i think dad was having more of a difficult time than mom actually was <laughs> wanting to rush back in there pick up his babies and give them a cuddle and a soothe but we had to remain resolute we were fraying at the edges at five months i was already back at work with my full schedule he was also back at work things had to carry on we must work in order to provide for these kids and for our sanity for our relationship for our uh, well-being mental and physical we needed these babies to sleep because we knew that they can sleep through the night and so we did the interval training and now the babies literally sleep from 6 in the evening until 6 in the morning the next day don't get me wrong it hasn't been smooth sailing the entire time as you know as a new mommy or daddy babies go through um, what do we call them? Sleep regressions or growth spurts. Growth spurts are associated with sleep regression. So this is at the time where baby usually falls out of his or her usual sleeping pattern, right? So you're doing everything right. Uh, the household is quiet in the evening. It's nice and dark. You've given the baby a warm bottle. Uh, you've given the baby a bath. You've read a storybook. Whatever is around your your sleep time practices, you've done that, you've done that all. Why on earth isn't this baby sleeping? Well, you might want to check if it isn't a growth spurt that your little one is going through. It's a very difficult time, it's uncomfortable, and also moms and dads, watch out for the times where babies are achieving big milestones. So it could be teething, it could be crawling, it could be walking, um, it could be rolling over, it could be um, spending more time, uh, time on their tummies and being able to lift their heads up and look around and do all of that cool stuff. All of these wonderful developmental milestones come with sleep regressions. Usually it's possible that your child um, is, is, is different. So don't be too hard on yourself. The key thing to do during those regressions is to keep the routine the same. Keep going at it. So if you would sleep train in Ferber method, um, go back to it. So start again, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes just keep that consistency around your child's bedtime as well so dad just reminded me that indeed he also says it's very important to keep at it it may be difficult you're hearing your baby oh my goodness screaming and crying as if you've abandoned them and sometimes that's i think it's it's a little bit of an abandonment thing that they go through like oh my gosh no one is here where's my mom and dad usually i cried for so long and they're here you know but you need to be resilient you need to ensure that um it's also something that you're comfortable with right the sleep training method that you choose but stick it out and i promise you you will have the results i wanted to show you someone this is ollie Ali is a, what do we call him? A, a, a soothing night lamp thing. It's just, it's flat right now. We need to charge it, but it's very, very cute. It's one of my favorite Tommy Tippy um, products that we were gifted and it is amazing. So 
Ollie is a night owl. He's got a little glowing night light. And if you press his buttons here in his feed, he can play different songs, uh, different melodies, um, white noise, the sound of rain, things like that. And it, it's also sound sensitive, so it's cry activated. Um, you can switch between the songs and that also helps. So um, a little night light so you can also see when you walk into the room. Um, what else do we have? We have another one, but I'll attach a little description and where we got it on, on Take A Lot. And what else did we have? Make sure the room is dark as well, right? Yeah, so those were the things that we did in order to achieve um, rest as twin parents, which is very, very important. And one of the great things that you need to do as a new twin mom or twin dad is keep the babies on the same schedule. Please, immediately from when you get to the hospital, from when you get back from the hospital, try your best to have babies awake at the same time, feeding at the same time, nappy changes at the same time, so that they're likely to what? Fall asleep at the same time. Let me know down below in the comments if you would like a video where I tell you exactly what our routine was in those first early weeks coming back from the hospital as a twin mom and dad. Thank you so much for watching this video. Comment, comment below. Share this with the new parent because these, if it works for two, surely it will work for one. That's just my assumption. Share it with a new parent if you can. Like it below and let's continue to have this channel growing. Click the notification uh, bell so that we can, um, so that you can receive notifications as soon as I've posted a new video. Watch until the very end and very soon, who knows, we might just be able to monetize this channel and grow bigger and even better. To all my twin mommies out there, hold on girl, you've got it. Love ya.